In today's video, I'm going to show you something you can do to your truck if you're in a northern environment that can protect your truck from unnecessary damage. So here's our 24, or I'm sorry, 23 F450. And as you see, it's got this salt spreader on it because we spread salt on um, parking lots, on private owned parking lots with this thing. It allows uh, the ground to thaw out or melt the icing. Uh, if you're in the north, you know what I mean. If you're from down south, you might not even know what I'm talking about. But salt is very corrosive, and when salt mixes with water, it becomes not only corrosive, but conductive. And being that this is a salt truck, we spread our salt, and then we get out, and we throw the salt with, this, with the little walk-behind spreader. So when you look in here, you can see that it's pretty awful but there's salt in the truck. Luckily, these trucks are aluminum, so it doesn't really act on the aluminum body as far as corrosion, but it will corrode steel. Now with the Fords, everything's powder coated real nice underneath and painted real good. So you don't really, I mean, this is the second year of it salting. And if you look underneath the truck, the, the, the powder coat on the frame and all that, it's holding up good. We try to rinse off the truck every time we service uh, our properties, but you know, it will eventually kind of rust out, you know, certain areas that can't get washed good. It's never going to be, well, it's going to take a very long time for it to be a structural issue with the truck as far as the steel frame and all that. I mean, you're talking maybe 15 years of this and you start to have uh, vehicles that have compromised frames and things like that. But the new paint and everything process, as long as you're rinsing it, you can probably, the truck's probably going to keep its integrity to be road worthy but what there where there is still an issue is on these harnesses so guys who spread salt or maybe you work in the winter you're using your truck the four-wheel drive and all that and you're getting out and you're just stepping on salty environments a lot and getting back in the vehicle that salt gets on your shoes and it tracks inside of the vehicle and look what happens to the harness now ford runs their harnesses in this trough and it is the low point of the vehicle and all of the moisture gets into this trough and you get issues. Well, they try to keep the harness up a little bit, but what you see is this flaky uh, crust, which is basically salt creep. Now, this is not good. This $80,000, $90,000 truck has salt all over this harness now this is bad because like i said salt's conductive and these wires are not marine graded wires meaning that the wire sheathing on this harness it's probably automotive grade but in this environment it would need to be marine grade meaning that it has a sheathing that is probably like a silicone sheathing or something like that that can prevent salt intrusion and it would have a tinned copper. Now, if you strip these wires, they're just regular copper. And all this salt and moisture that sits on here can cause issues. So I want to show you a solution that I've done, even though I haven't done it to this truck, done it to the other truck that works just as much as this one. Uh, let's take a look at how that looks. Now, I'm going to take a trip over to the other one. It's right outside here. <laughs> I've already done this before it ever got salt but i forgot <clears throat> to do this one the 450. so when i got this truck i had the time to open up the whole harness and prepare it for what was coming the salt so what i did is i went ahead and wrapped the whole harness completely with a uo listed vinyl tape that is super wide tape so it's no seams and it totally wraps around the whole thing in one piece so you don't really have too 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 many seams and I took all this off and I took that wrap up this way a little bit further than what you can see here but as you see the salt is not able to penetrate through the entire harness and it's it's not even zip tied down anymore because I had this all out at some point and it's able to i can feel that salt in my hands but it's able to try to keep as much of that salt out of this harness as possible 
furthermore from there right in this area when this was all done when the uh, vehicles taken apart more but right up in this area we put a hole in the floor and that hole allows moisture to drain out of the truck so instead of this area filling up with water and keeping the water in the moisture will drain down and come out right on the pinch weld actually and you can't really see up through the cab because there's so many layers and baffles and things like that around this area but if you fill the truck cab with moisture it will drain and work its way out versus sitting on this harness and submerging the harness so that is the thing that we did to this truck i need to do the other truck but before i do that truck i'm gonna have to clean all that salt out of it and really dry that harness out because the salt needs to be wet in order to break down so i could probably get a chemical that can lessen the amount of water needed to uh, get that salt. Look at all this. This is all salt creep right on this plastic because it gets in here because that's what we do. You can see it. The salt dog is on the truck and that's what it does. It spreads salt. So with that being said, I need to take that truck apart and go ahead and clean all the salt out of that harness and wrap that whole harness and then also put the holes in it so that when water gets inside of the cab whether it's a leak or something or just from your shoes can bring enough water to kind of fill up the truck you got like four guys getting in and out of this thing with snow snow and salt on their feet now as far as issues that it's caused as you saw we have a lot of salt on the vehicle the only problem that I've noticed with this truck is the temperature gauge is so inaccurate on snow days. Like when it's real snowy and you've gotten in and out a couple times, the temperature gauge just reads crazy readings like 100 degrees outside, things like that. That kind of messes with the HVAC and all that. And I thought it was a temperature sensor, but when the season ends, all of a sudden the temperature gauge starts working again. Now that could just be from all that salt on the harness just transferring a little bit of freaking signal now the temperature gauge is on the passenger side mirror and that passenger side was filthy loaded with salt so that temperature gauge right there underneath it just seemed like it can't get a good reading with all that salt that's the only thing i noticed with the whole truck now on the there was another truck that i had that was getting the salt on it that truck's gone and sold but with that one, it not only got the salt, but it had a water leak as well. And with all that salt and then the water leak, it just soaked that harness down. It was underwater for a very long time and eventually threw a bunch of codes on the dash. And a bunch of functions were lost, like the HVAC went out. You couldn't have the fan, the radio turned off. It was just totally freaked out by all that moisture and it sat on that harness. And that was before I put the drain hole in that. I ended up experimenting with that truck. It was a 19250. I experimented with that truck first, and I put a drain hole, and it would fill with dirt too fast. So I actually increased the size of the hole on that truck, and I kind of dialed it in to where I could make a hole in the truck so the water can get out, and then, you know, it'd be big enough of a hole. You can't see through to the outside, though. Like, when you look down into to the hole that's been made, you don't see the outside because... Like I said, there's layers and baffles, but it just allows that water to work its way out of the truck instead of sitting inside of that trough and sitting on that harness. So that's going to be on the list of things to do. Maybe I'll film that for this truck, just getting all that salt off of the system and, you know, cleaning this out, maybe taking this wrap off of here. Great that they wrapped it, but it just lets everything in and then getting that salt off of this thing and cleaning it out now this is for guys in snow removal and guys that might be walking on some salty grounds maybe they're just checking properties for whatever reason this type of manager or something that's got to step in salt and get in and out of the vehicle multiple times could be that type of situation uh as well as a snow service a snow contractor but I want to show that I need to get around to doing it to this truck, but this is just a quick video showing uh, the situation and uh, 
shining some light, maybe a potential solution. Uh, this is something that I'm trying out and I've been doing for a number of years and going to continue to do uh, this more with these trucks as, if, as I find time. Like, it's not the end of the world because, as you see, we did this and we still survived and made it through the season and didn't break down a vehicle or nothing like that. But it's kind of a weird design that all this wiring runs down the trough of the truck it's got to be a better way to do this but this is nonetheless how they do it but anyway my name is sean this is ds trucks this is our 450 we got the 350 uh single rear wheel out there but comment below and let me know your thoughts and hope to see you in the next video over and out